edition of Dynamic CIO Talk Show. Today we have with us uh, Guru Prasad Gaonkar, uh, APEC Sales, uh, APEC uh, SaaS Leader, uh, Office of Finance and Digital Supply Chain. Uh, Guru is uh, an industry technology leader with a great deal of exposure across Asia Pacific and Japan uh, markets and across industries. Um, just to give you a small lockdown due to the spread of COVID-19 has caused unprecedented situations around us. We all know about it. Um, and no sooner uh, than when most of the business activities and global supply chains uh, came to a grinding halt, we realized that our efforts on digital were very superficial and on the surface. However, uh, with the current situation at hand, uh, most organizations are now looking at both a reset and refresh in their digital transformation journeys. With the advent of this term, new normal uh, technologies uh, such as AI, such as analytics, uh, various cloud-based platforms are promising a greater degree of transformational shift. Uh, so in today's uh, talk show, we will discuss some of these aspects in details with Guru. So welcome to the show, Guru. How are you doing? Very well. I think it's bright and sunny out here. So looking forward and um, I'm, I'm loving this working from home. Thanks. Great. So let me begin with asking you, how do you assess the current situation uh, uh, globally and specifically in the APEC region? Uh, where does the economy stand and how can it make a recovery in the near and long term? Well, as a region, um, APEC has come through crisis before and you know, we've seen that it has emerged stronger from them. Now, obviously, this situation that we are in is fundamentally different because it's a health crisis. And because it's a health crisis, we have seen greater shifts in everyday behaviors, both in terms of you know, demand and supply disparity. Now, obviously, this disparity has sent demand shocks, uh, pulling the whole global economy into slowdown and thereby recession. Um, now, there are you know, uh, APAC nations, those emerging areas, you know, are presented with unprecedented risks especially when you consider the pandemics hit the most vulnerable, the hardest. Now, we in APAC nations have reasons to believe that we will emerge stronger than ever, given people capital, the large pool of people that we have, as well as the domestic consumption, the huge computational power that is available to us and the technology knowledge to change and adapt. Hence, the question that to ask now is, can Asian nations and companies play a major role in defining the next normal. For this, companies across APAC regions need to hit the reset button towards building for resilience. And therefore, we believe the best thing that companies like ours can do is resetting you know, these business leaders such as CFOs and supply chain leaders to explore multiple cash flow, liquidity and supply chain domains uh, you know, and combine them into something that can produce value. A great example that I came across in the in, in the last few days is that of Western Digital, a global chip manufacturer. They bought eight of their manufacturing facilities live on an Oracle ERP and supply chain cloud. Now, obviously, all this is done on a 30-day travel period freeze, uh, which normally would involve hundreds of people flying in uh, because you know it's all about training and change management because it's not just about implementing new software. Uh, it's also about embracing automation, reducing complexity and simplifying workflow. So this is where we see that, you know, um, greatly outweighed by some of the benefits of suddenly adopting, you know, new capabilities that will lead to, you know, keeping employees, you know, keeping their various stakeholders, driving recovery of organizations and thereby contributing to economic recovery. And this is where we believe that, you know, this is Asia's movement to pivot to the next normal. Great. So, uh, a good example of uh, you know how the reset needs to be done, and uh, you know you gave a good example of uh, Western Digital how it has actually performed in this era of uh, in this time of crisis. So, moving on, um, I would like to ask you a few more uh, very specific questions, and uh, you know, for example, the technology infrastructure cracks and loopholes. Uh, came out and open when the pandemic uh, broke out uh, and the work from home was imposed. Uh, were, were we just superficially digital, uh, uh, you know, 
did you did you find the most uh, pieces disjointed missing when people spoke about their digital transformation uh, initiatives um i think opens up a very interesting perspective rahul um yes it is a heavy dosage of reality for many organization but let's put some perspective to it the world used to be linear what we are witnessing today is unprecedented change things that have not changed over centuries decades or even years are now changing month to month so this is a drift not just a shift and for that reason you know we believe that the next normal is faster than we think now think about fast forward to 2030 people are talking about job market in transformation 85% of the jobs that will exist in 2030 do not exist yet people are talking about intelligent operation where robotics will be able to operate factories 24 by 7 we're also talking about 75% of the current smp 500 company being replaced now what does it mean this means that apac organizations need to unlock from old notions this means that you know they have to hit reset on a few things number 1 hit reset to restoring trust by means of connected data that is to help making you know uh, rapid decisions this is what is expected of all board members that we see today a reset from rapid iteration to connected intelligence because you know for them to be able to connect cash flow liquidity and supply chains which is a major uh, you know flaw that we have seen where it doesn't work end to end in the given situation and third but not the least a reset to everything as a service now obviously this hit hit reset approach will overcome many of the fatal flaws that we see in the current approach to technology and it will instead force organizations to widen and deepen connections between business partners technology and information rather than just moving fast and breaking things and this too according to us is the new normal also in technology so great uh, you know unlocking from the old notion and various types of resets that the industries have to now press uh, to to become more agile and and become more uh, more available for their customers now since the process uh, of unlocking is on uh, globally and especially in the apac region uh, what according to you should be the top technology priorities of of businesses across sectors that can prepare them for any situation even if it is worse than what we what we uh, just witnessed super now i think let's put some perspectives on what are business leaders experiencing the most according to a bcg pulse check survey this is the most challenging situation of most business leaders careers many could not have even imagined the level of remote capability and digital interaction that we would be experiencing today across all business functions we have seen agility take a very new meaning and because of that there are three business priorities or technology led business priorities to consider first less is more in the new digital economy so what do we mean by that business leaders need to get rid of that technology debt most of those technology investments has been accumulated over time which has taken into huge capex and continue to run at high opex which is the uh, capital expenditure as well as high uh, operational expenditure time is now to reset to software as a service and this is what everybody is trying to address with which is costs second you know frictionless innovation measured by successful outcomes the future of technology investment is all about appreciating asset where you know where you buy a particular scope that you subscribe to that continuously appreciates in the form of frictionless innovation and this is where artificial intelligence and uh, ml comes into the picture a good way to articulate this is a mckinsey report which shares a tech enabled transformation will increase shareholder returns by 9 to 22% you know we're talking about increase in revenues we're talking about expanded margins we're talking about pursuing new revenue streams with different business model all led by technology enabled transformation so this is the second one which is frictionless innovation measured by successive outcomes and third is the scale according to organizational strategy you know you don't want to be investing in something big but then starting small you want something which can start anywhere and go everywhere here is where we are talking about a one connected enterprise across all business line so you don't have to deal with inter company integration complexity 
and this is where you know for business leaders do nothing is not an option and the time is now to progress down the leaning curve toward becoming a connected digital leader a classic example that i would like to share you know which 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 very well connects to this uh, whole notion that i share today is that of the global shipping and logistics conglomerate transworld group they call their project innovation in motion what they did is that they standardized and brought all their functions which is finance operation procurement supply chain and even hr to eliminate manual intervention and to introduce advanced operational efficiencies so this company is talking about incorporating emerging technologies like blockchain adaptive intelligence and iot as they move forward on the digital journey and climb higher on the customer's value chain this to us is the next wave of how technology priorities will lead to business outcomes great so uh, what i could pick up from your answer is that you know there is a need to get rid of the techni- technical debt that has been accumulated over the years there is a need for frictionless innovation and bring in technologies which can be uh, which can give us measured outcomes uh there is also a need for organizational uh, restructuring of organizational strategies uh and and uh, you know do nothing is not an option anymore and uh, finally you gave an you gave an excellent example of transworld which uh, which is practicing innovation in motion so wonderful uh you know my next question to you is that uh, after the out- outbreak of uh, of this pandemic uh, there has been a widespread discussion on digital forward a reassessment of uh, of kind of reassessment of digital capabilities that can uh, not only support business continuity but also keep businesses largely unaffected uh, how can how can that be achieved with with what we are uh, what we have just spoken and what we are talking about yeah i think um, just to just to put a little bit of a uh, lighter moment to that rahul i will talk about digital forward i wouldn't talk about after the outbreak because i think we are still waiting for it Yeah. So let's talk about digital forward. Um, until now, we had the luxury of working with technologies we understood very well. But what is digital forward? Digital forward is the challenge where we will be working with advanced technologies that we do not understand very well. Which means every organization on its own will not be able to understand these technologies and relate to their business. And by that. time they figure it out it's probably too late to catch up and because of this we believe there are three key areas for reassessment when it comes to digital capabilities number 1 is the boardroom of the future this is where organization need to reset to restoring trust the ability to make accelerated decision making by turning the office of finance which is the cfo the fp and the organization which is the powerhouse of insights you know to address rapidly changing market context so here we are talking about forward uh, thinking advanced analytics we are talking about machine learning capabilities that allows for deeper and more engaged performance dialogues where a quicker decision making you know for your board of directors which is a must and the need of the hour the second thing that we are talking about is inverting the erp pyramid this is to reset from rapid iteration you know a, a bain and company survey talks about 85% of the ceos you know cease to uh, be value creators because of internal complexity you know by today's standards all on prem or even cloud hosted erps that most organizations rely on to run their finance supply chain you know which is the backbone of of uh, uh, the enterprise their their existing on prem and cloud hosted erps are considered museum pieces SaaS computing, artificial intelligence, big data have fundamentally changed IT and workplace, where organizations now need to look at inverting the ERP pyramid. So that is the second point. The third, and this nicely brings to me the the, the, the most important priority, if not the least, is to building for continuous resilience, which is that you know you don't want to fill up you know old wine with a uh, you know in a new bottle. You want to talk about something that you can continuously rely on. and this is where we are talking about frictionless innovation where you can reset to erp as a service or everything is a service and here we are talking about you know these platforms or technology contributions leading to business outcomes not just a point application aimed at any production or operations a classic example in this case for us is wipro you know wipro in india they have seven business units across 10 geographies and seven to eight service lines 
so you know it is a mammoth task you know for anyone you know running that scale and size to be able to run a planning process in their own school they would they used to run it all on manual primarily on spreadsheet and ppt and had to manually consolidate it within a matter of 12 weeks they were able to move from their old school approach to a new oracle enterprise performance management saas for them to be able to get access to everything that i spoke about you know in the previous three points and this according to us is the new digital forward which is empowered by saas great uh, so three things uh, which came out uh, is that the boardroom of the future uh, needs to be uh, needs to be changed uh, you know inverting the erp pyramid uh, to not allow the erp uh, erps to look like museum pieces and building for the continuous resi- uh, resilience uh, where where we bring in the everything as a service concept and uh, i had the fortune of uh, speaking to the uh, folks with vitro on the on the example that you gave and it was indeed uh, a wonderful uh, uh, example to to uh, relate to now finally you know uh, two things uh, came out clearly in terms of uh, technology adoption uh, during this uh, during this crisis period which was uh, the cloud infrastructure uh, became even more pervasive uh, even more acceptable uh, and the saas based applications you know now the every organization is is thinking or all, all i have already moved or thinking of moving very soon to the saas based application how do you see this uh, augmenting in the future and the future of uh, work changes super i think raul you know when we talk about future and future of work let's talk about impact yeah um, an organization esg global they ran a survey in what are the benefits of implementing technology and what does it mean to future of and future of work so then the survey says that technology is fast becoming synonymous with growth and profitability so what does it mean consider this a cfo you know running of office of finance function and every related function is able to have transactions automatically reconciled we're talking about around 92% of the transactions automatically reconciled we're talking about a global intra company balances across hundreds of legal entities reconciled in less than 90 minutes we're also talking about expense allocation reduced by 98% you know we're also talking about manual accounting reduced by 30% 35% with multi ledger multi currency journals so this is what we're talking about impact to office of finance you take it a little bit further you know for example automotive companies with blockchain enabled erp you know they'll be able to shift their product lines to renewable energy you know with confirming to oecd supply chain um, guidelines a classic example is volvo which is able to introduce you know um because of blockchain um traceability increasing sales with customers driving electric cars knowing that the material of the batteries have been sourced responsibility we're also talking about e-commerce driving demand based supply chain and companies with iot embedded erp as movements will be tracked and machines will be able to reorder items even when you know the the, the maintenance needed does not need any human intervention now when we talk about these kind of business outcomes yeah obviously you will not be able to convert your existing uh, infrastructure or erp to suit to future of erp now you could ask me why for the same reasons where a legacy car that you currently own cannot be converted to a self driving tesla your legacy erp or an on prem erp cannot be converted to a self driving erp as a service and because of this you know Oracle's SaaS native approach to ERP and supply chain, which has embedded AI and ML, all our seven thousand customers globally have been able to overnight switch to work from home, are able to implement rapid decision making in business strategy, and power up a zero touch operation. This evolution of ERP as a service into enterprise business capabilities is driven and controlled more by business and by IT, and that is how augmenting the future and future of chain work looks like. from our perspective thank you uh, so uh, you know in the end i would just like to summarize that this reset has to be uh, something very exceptional something very extraordinary and not uh, not uh, you know uh, coming from the background not not having the the load of 
of your legacy you have to have a very fresh thinking a fresh perspective l- learn lessons from what went wrong and what prevented organizations uh, from from uh, you know switching over uh, from a legacy uh, kind of work to a work from home environment and i think technology uh, will play a very decisive role in that so thank you very much uh, guru for your time and effort i enjoyed the conversation mm-hmm.